I did not know that there are wild parrots in Istanbul, but it was a very beautiful surprise. I'm making travel videos for a while and drones are a great way to record establishing shots. And they are also super fun to fly, but only FPV drones. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the problems that I have faced when I switched to DJI Avatar. When I decided to fly an FPV drone, first I bought the FPV remote controller to be able to practice on a simulator, which was a great idea because I really cannot imagine what would happen if I just bought the drone and start flying right after. At some point I realized that the simulator is taking me to a path that I'm not really interested in. As you get better in simulator, you start to get into drone racing. If you want to make cinematic videos, I think racing is not what you need. It's better to find an empty plot of land like this one and start practicing yourself with your drone. The sound of a drone was never a criteria for me until now. This drone is very very loud and the tone of the sound is very high pitched so I know it sounds like a screaming alien ripping through the air. Because it's very loud, it brings a lot of unwanted attention. If there is anybody around, they will try to understand what's going on, where the sound is coming from. They will either get curious and come at you, maybe try to talk to you, or they will get disturbed and come at you again to complain. Of course, you shouldn't fly this drone when there are people nearby, but to be realistic, we are 8 billion people on this planet, so it is pretty hard to find a spot without anyone else. Another problem for me is the range of this drone. It is very limited. So I am on an empty land right now. There are no obstacles to block the signal. There is no radio tower or anything nearby, as far as I know. Even here, I cannot reach 200 meters flight range. If there are obstacles between you and the drone, like buildings, well, I think you are gonna lose the drone because this is what happened to me in Portugal. I was diving into a beach and I went behind a rock and immediately I lost the connection. So what happens when you lose connection? Well, in theory, your drone should switch back to normal mode and start hovering. If it cannot reconnect to your system, it will go back to its home point. Well, this didn't happen to me. <laughs> when I lost the connection with my avatar, it was gone. So what happened to that drone? I think it did not switch back to normal mode and of course in manual mode if it's lose connection it will just go straight down and crash somewhere and I think after that ocean took it because I couldn't find the remainings of the drone as well. So that drone is dead but its memory lives. On the other hand the footage you are watching right now is shot by DJI Air 2 and I was controlling the drone way back at that beach. The drone is behind massive cliffs and rocks but still I had no issues with the signal and I think my distance was more than at least 1000 meters. It is pretty far away and even though there were obstacles I had no issues with a regular drone so this is something to keep in mind. Another thing that limits me with this drone is the fact that it's more dangerous. It can cause really big problems. It's very risky to fly this drone. Because it's so fast and agile and able to make crazy maneuvers, anything can go wrong. Also, because it's too fast, it's very exciting to watch it. It's just so immersive. When I'm recording something with a regular drone, I always speed it up because they are just too slow. It's really boring to watch it and nobody would watch a drone pushing in for 5 minutes. This drone is made for flying fast and getting close to objects as much as possible. But you have to be precise with the joystick, almost like a surgeon. If the weather is windy, well, you can just forget about flying because the wind resistance of this drone is not really there. When you travel, you really don't have the luxury to wait for the perfect conditions. Perfect lighting, perfect sunset, perfect clouds, no rain, no crowds. But I think I can tell you that wind is the worst thing that can happen to this drone. It will affect your flight a lot and you won't be happy with the videos for sure. But in the end, this is a Cinewoop drone, so it's not made for flying on a windy day. 
Another downside of Avata is you cannot record in a log mode. But <laughs> there is also the fact that Avata has even higher image quality compared to older drones of DJI, like for example Air 2. So even though you cannot record in a log mode, I think the image quality is higher. I also want to talk about my favorite feature of this drone, which is uh, you can adjust the camera angle via remote controller even on the fly. When you tilt up your camera, you may think that your camera will look upwards, but actually it's your drone will be tilting up. Let's imagine that you are flying forward, so your camera will be parallel to the ground and the body of your drone will be tilted up. And this is gonna create more thrust, your drone will fly faster and more aggressively. So you can choose a lower camera angle when you want to fly very close to objects or nearby people or maybe you want to fly over the grass on sunset very smoothly like in the gladiator. So being able to adjust the camera angle via remote controller I think is a very very cool feature. So I think overall this drone is incredibly fun to fly but it's not good to have it as a main drone. I think it's just not very reliable because you can lose it or crash it anywhere your drone will be gone and you will be without a drone maybe for your whole vacation or whatever. If this is your main drone I think it's better to have a spare one. In that case you will be carrying two drones. If you are gonna carry two drones maybe it's better to carry a regular drone instead of an another FPV. So I think that's it for this video. It is definitely so much fun to fly this drone but it comes with its problems. Let me know what you think in comment section and see you on the next one.